All right, what's going on internet? Uh, so, you probably have noticed a dive in production quality of this video compared to some of the other ones I've done, but I don't have access to a camera at the moment, so bear with me. Um, basically, today's video is going to be really, really simple. Um, so, if you've been following this channel, uh, you know that for the last uh, couple of weeks I've been posting Adventures in Solace. So, it's kind of a uh, kind of vlog type, update type things of me trying out uh, Solus, um, Solus Linux. Now, I've also uh, posted a two part um, series in that of looking and comparing Solus to Mac OS. And that got me thinking, I wonder how many people out there using, uh, using Apple stuff, using Mac, um, want to be able to transition away or at least be able to be compatible with other, other systems out there, Windows, Linux, Android, whatever it is. So that got me thinking, well, why not make a very quick video as short and punchy as I possibly can uh, to address um, you know, some of the, some of the issues that I've come up against and, uh, and some of the apps and services that I'm using to kind of bridge the gap. Um, so if you are an Apple user and you are wanting to leave the walled garden, here's how you might want to do it. So, um, some of the famous ones that you might be familiar with from Apple reminders, notes. So reminders and notes, both of these are very common in the Mac uh, ecosystem and they sync up very well, obviously with iCloud and thus your iPhone. Now, the way that I've managed to get around this is with Wonderlist. Wonderlist is my go-to to-do app and task management app now, uh, and it works across various platforms. Um, and I found it uh, very helpful with the Chrome web app. Now, bear with me, because I realized that the Chrome web apps are being phased out. However, the web app for Wonderlist is still very, very good, meaning that compatibility across multiple systems is actually very, very achievable. So, Wonderlist, that replaces uh, Apple reminders for me. Um, for, and second of all, web browsers. Web browsers are very important. I have settled on Firefox, specifically Firefox Quantum. There's a bunch of different reasons behind that that I won't get into now, but basically cross-platform sync so you can get your passwords, your bookmarks, and all of that fun stuff across literally whatever platform you want. Linux, Windows, Mac, uh, you know, iOS, Android, all of them, they all sync and work beautifully. And since Firefox Quantum that came out at the end of last year, um, this has been really brilliant in terms of performance, in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of web page rendering, it, it keeps pace with the quickest web, uh, web browsers out there. The extensions are still pretty uh, prolific. And so overall, I really love Firefox's browser now and it d takes care of all the cross-platform syncing that I could possibly need. Okay, moving on. Another really big one for me is email. Now on the Mac side of things, I really fell in love with Airmail. Airmail is a email client that, uh, that is part of the Mac App Store. Um, it is a fantastic email client in, a, in its own right. Um, and I think the best alternative that I've found to this that works across whatever platform you want is Mailspring. Now, Mailspring is an app that is, uh, it has two different tiers. It has a free tier and it has a pro tier as most, as a lot of apps do these days. And it comes from the Nihilus project. Uh, and now the Nihilus project has been forked a couple of times and, uh, and the different companies fell through at different points. But this is by the original authors that, um, that created the Nihilus email app. And uh, honestly, it handles whatever email you throw at it. Uh, as you can see here, Unified Inbox, it, it manages Office 365, it manages Gmails, it manages all that fun stuff. It's got a lot of great features in it. Um, so honestly, it's probably one of the best um, email programs that I can possibly find right now. It works beautifully under Linux. Uh, and it works in Windows and Mac as well. Um, they do have a pro tier, but I'm not gonna go into that here. Moving right along, when it comes to iTunes and Apple Music, the one that I have found the most success with has been Google Play Desktop Music Player or Google Play Music Desktop Player. Yeah, something like that. Um, this is a, this is a um, very simple desktop app that um, wraps up the web player and it just gives you all the native hardware controls and all that kind of thing. So brilliant app, definitely recommend that. You can dump all of your music from your iTunes account, upload it into a Google account, and you can access it anywhere. Uh, and once you've got it on Google Play Music, you can get the apps on mobile devices and, uh, and whatever platform you wanna choose. So again, it's one step closer to leaving the walled garden in terms of, uh, in terms of Apple. Now, another really good one is uh, journaling apps. 
Now, um, journaling apps, there's this brilliant app on Mac called Day One. Day One is a really slick, slick journaling app. Um, and uh, you know it has different subscription tiers nowadays uh, it left a lot of people a little bit disgruntled in terms of um, the features and being able to sync between different devices well the answer to that in my opinion is an app called journal a service called journey my apologies uh, so journey is an app and a service that um, that is tied to a Google Drive account so it synchronizes between a bunch of different platforms using Google Drive so you don't actually have to have Google Drive installed it just uses the server on the back end to help keep everything in check um, now the brilliant thing again is got to come down to Chrome Web Apps now again I realize that Chrome Web Apps are shutting up shop in fact they already have um, hit the microphone sorry about that um, but the good news is, is that there are clients available for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android and all that fun stuff and I've used their app quite regularly and while you do need to pay uh, for the synchronization between these different um, ecosystems, you only pay for the app itself. In terms of using the actual service, you can always just jump onto a web page and use their online app and it doesn't cost you anything uh, to do that and to have the apps on your mobile devices. The only thing it's going to cost is if you want to get the native uh, natively coded app for Windows or Mac. Um, so again, Chrome Web Apps used to be useful and it kind of behaved like a native app, but not such anymore. But Journey is still a great app for those looking to leave the Apple ecosystem. All right, finally, cloud storage is super important. Um, honestly, there's not really much around uh, in terms of quality cloud storage on multiple platforms. The one that I found that does the best job is still Dropbox. Dropbox is expensive, but it is so prolific that uh, honestly there's not very many options out there that are better than it. In fact, I've switched back from using uh, Google Drive and OneDrive to use Dropbox just so I can uh, be a bit more platform independent. When it comes to video chat, um, unfortunately, again, a lot of these aren't necessarily open source, but they're just helpful in terms of being able to make yourself a bit more platform independent. And in terms of video chatting, it's hard to dispute Skype. There are quality clients available, or at least the best quality you can get on multiple platforms um, for Windows, Mac, Linux, and obviously iOS and Android as well. Their, their support um, throughout you know, years and years now of development is still pretty significant. Um, and in terms of being able to keep up to date, Skype is probably gonna be your best bet. So finally, just to wrap up here, um, when it comes to video editing, I found probably the best one to be DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve 14 is freely available um, if, uh, if you don't want some of the super pro features that are in it. And, uh, and you can get it on Windows and Mac and also Red Hat versions of Linux are officially supported, although they've managed to get it running on Ubuntu and Fedora and some other ones as well. But uh, officially speaking, Red Hat Linux is what DaVinci Resolve officially supports. So um, yeah, DaVinci Resolve has a, lot of, has a lot of stuff going for it. I'm still trying to figure out a way to transition over to it in terms of my primary video editor, because right now I'm still stuck in Final Cut land, but I reckon this will be the last, this will be the last straw. Once I can figure out DaVinci well, um, then I will be effectively free from the Apple ecosystem and uh, and whatever you know Macs have to offer. Okay, one last thing is just messaging and communication. Um, obviously, Slack is pretty much everywhere um, as opposed to using iMessage or Messages. Um, but I would also recommend Messenger for Desktop. Messenger for Desktop is another one of those apps that just wraps up the web version of Messenger.com, the Facebook Messenger and uh, wraps it into an app that can give you native notifications and, um, and all that kind of stuff, uh, keyboard shortcuts and the like. So Messenger for Desktop, um, I do recommend it. Again, Mac, Windows, Linux, it's all there. Um, and that's obviously dependent on you being in the Facebook, uh, having a Facebook account. Um, it, beyond that, Telegram and Viber also have really good quality apps across all three platforms. So those would be my recommendations if you're wanting to leave iMessage. That's about it. That's what I've got for you guys in terms of being able to get yourself a little bit more free and independent of the Apple ecosystem. This turned out to be a little bit longer video than I thought, but drop a like if you enjoyed it and if it's helpful to you and leave a comment down below in terms of other quality alternatives uh, to software that you've used either on Windows or Mac and software that's helped you become a little bit more platform independent. Um, so the beauty about all this is that um, if this MacBook was to die and I had no more access to Mac OS, I actually wouldn't lose anything in terms of functionality because I could do pretty much everything that I need to do on Linux or Windows. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the point there. All right, catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.